<laughs> Three generations of the Cantali family from Sydney's west are stealing a precious moment together for playtime and a laugh. <laughs> Family matriarch Rose proudly watches two of her five grandkids, but her niggling concern is how their parents will afford to raise them. Yay. People need to be very vocal. We have an election coming up now and I think this should be a focus because, I mean, children are the backbone of this country. The biggest change Rose has noticed is childcare costs. When she was studying and retraining to enter the workforce in the 80s, she remembers costs being manageable. You were looking at about, I think it was $30 a day at the time. For Rose's daughter-in-law, Robin, pregnant with her third kid, childcare costs are crippling at $40,000 per year. So for us, um, it was a big decision that I had to make to be able to go back to work. My husband and I um, spent a long time working out our budget, obviously um, with the increased price of living and um, other expenses. Um, we really had to think about whether or not it was feasible for me to be able to go back to work. The family considers early learning priceless for Matthew and Amelia, but the fees push their family budget to the limit. It's a great deal of, of, of money for us. Um, but again, it's something that we really value, that we, that we really, we see it as an investment. Um, and so it's very much up there um, in terms of our electricity bills and our mortgage repayments and all of those kinds of things. Oh, yum. Yeah, that looks so good. Inside, the family celebrate their shared Italian heritage over a meal. But when they move to the next level of cost comparisons, for schools, there's more bad news. The bills today are about four times as high. I can't believe how hard it is. I'm looking at my children today and I think it's become a luxury. I think, and that's, that's concerning for me. Yeah, it's yeah. really expensive. Robin hasn't decided whether to send her kids public or private, but either way, she's already planning for the cost. If Amelia and Matthew go to public school, the estimated total cost of their education is $84,000 each. For a Catholic education, it'll be $144,000 and independent, $349,000. It's not so much about private or public or independent, it's really about what's the best thing that we can possibly do for our children. It's almost guaranteed Matthew and Amelia will live at home longer, be more likely to have a university degree. It all adds up to today's parents feeling the pressure. I'm also very well aware that, that perhaps in 15 years time or 20 years time when my children do hope to enter university, I would hate for them to not be able to based on cost. When I did uni, it was free because it was the old system where university was free. It's not just the Cantali family. Education's a slug to every family's budget, but even in a hip pocket election, neither side is going to the polls with major structural reforms. The government just invested $3.2 billion in childcare and preschool. Subsidy relief for many families kicked in earlier this year. Labor's promising to go much further. It's offering fee relief to all families earning less than $500,000. It says it'll cost $5.4 billion and kick in by 2023. At the school gate, the two major parties' policies are aspirational rather than locked-in promises. And even if they proceed, they're unlikely to be noticed in family budgets. And on university campuses, the only party offering major changes is the Greens, which are promising to waive student debts. Like many parents, the Cantalis had hoped for more. With this generation already struggling, they're worried about Amelia and Matthew. My husband and I um, would be considered higher income earners. We're both very much committed to education uh, with ourselves and with our children. And we very much struggle um, to meet the needs um, financially for our family. I don't think I could have coped. There is no way that I could have been able to afford to do what I did. <laughs> <laughs>